Hi, and welcome back. So we'll begin today's lesson with a discussion on the default copy semantics afforded to our user-defined types. So what we're going to see here is the default copy mechanism of, say, objects of our user-defined types is going to be implicitly provided to us by the compiler. The default behavior of these operations is going to be a memberwise copy, which is defined as essentially taking each data member from one object and taking its value and putting it into the corresponding field or data member in the object to which we're initializing with or assigning to. For instance, let's go ahead and compose a vector imp. We defined this type in the previous uh, lesson. So I will refer you um, to that lesson if you're unfamiliar or uh, do not recall how vector int was structured. But in any case, V1 is going to start out with um, two objects on its dynamically allocated array. Uh, each will be initialized to the integer value of one and the initial capacity of that dynamically allocated array will be this initial size multiplied by two, so a capacity of four. So if we consider the uh, data members um, for V1 array size and capacity, um, we can go ahead and see their initial values in this table. Array is going to take on the address to the dynamically allocated array that we acquired during the construction of this object. Recall that is an array. That array here is going to be a pointer to an integer object residing on the free store, specifically to a contiguous block of integer objects um, four in length. The size is going to be two because that is how many slots within that array of four have been taken up. And the size will also effectively communicate the next open slot. Um, if we were to say to push back an additional integer uh, value uh, to V1. And then capacity is the total number of integer objects that we can store before a resize becomes necessary. So let's say we have something like um, vector int v2s equal to v1. Or what if we had something like, say, whoops, vector int v2, and then say v2 is equal to v1. So these are going to be two copy mechanisms. The one on the left is initializing a new object v2 with v1 using, the, using our v1 here that we set up as the initializer. On the right, we have some sort of um, vector int object v2. I guess I should put in a parameterized constructor because that's all we have, Let's say three zero. And after some point in the lifetime of v2, v2 will be assigned v1. What do, what do these two statements mean, the um, initialization and assignment? How are these um, conducted? Uh, we never defined any sort of description for uh, what it means uh, for these operations to take place, meaning we've effectively left it up to the compiler. So the default copy semantics upon initialization are simply going to be a memberwise copy. So if we look at the three fields, the three data members of V1, we have array, we have size, and we have finally capacity. In V2, we also have array, size, and capacity. In the case where we're initializing a vector int object within vector int with an object of the same type, such as V1, a memberwise copy is said to occur. So whatever value is in V1's capacity is going to be copied into V2's capacity. Whatever value is in V1 size is going to be copied into V2 size. Now here's where things get interesting. Whatever value is stored in V1's array is going to be copied into V2's array. Now think about the implications of this. So V1 might look like this. This um, we might have, let's go ahead and say, V1, this is going to be identifier. 
it's a named object. So some portion of it will be on the stack. And then it also owns a free store, an object allocated on the free store. So let's say V1 has a pointer, two and four. And let's say that pointer points to some sort of array on the free store, whatever size it was. I guess it was capacity four, so let's draw it as such. Okay, when we build V2, notice that V2 is also going to have a capacity of four, size of two, and a pointer. Now, when the member-wise copy happens, we're simply taking the address in V1 and plopping it into the corresponding field array in V2, which means that at the end of this operation, V1 is also going to point to the same array that V1 owns. So this dynamically allocated object has become shared between V1 and V2. We'll see here momentarily that that is known as a shallow copy. Now, if we go ahead and look at the case of assignment, and this is why early in the semester, I was so keen on saying initialization is different from assignment, because what we're going to see here is that um, the actual functions that will allow us to define what it means to initialize one object of a user defined type with another of the same type or assigning one object of a user defined type to an object of the same type is going to be differentiated um, within the uh, functions that we'll have to uh, go ahead and define uh, to describe that behavior uh, should we want to override this uh, kind of default mechanism. So let's say we're starting out here again, just with um, V1, it's initialized, it has an array field. Let's look at, uh, okay, it has a size field and a capacity field. None of this is any different from the previous example. Let's say we start out, okay, V2, it's going to have an array, it's going to have a size field and a capacity field. Now let's say that we'd like to assign V1 to V2. So this is also going to be, whoops, as we observed before, a member-wise copy. So whatever was stored in V1's capacity field will be copied over into V2's capacity field. Whatever was stored in V1 size field is going to be copied over into the corresponding field of V2. So V2 will also get two. And then this is where that shallow copy shared behavior comes from. Whatever value, and that value is an address in V1's array field. So that address is going to be copied over and placed into V2's field. Now notice the composition of, oops, this should have said V2. Sorry about that. That the composition of V2 and V1 are identical at this point because a member-wise copy occurred. Whatever what was in V1's capacity was copied into V2's capacity. Whatever was in v one size was copied into v two size. Whatever was stored in V1's array field even if it was an address, was copied over into the corresponding field of V2. So again, we have this same sort of thing going on here where we created, and I'll go ahead and just draw this one more time because I think it's uh, productive to run through even if you have it sorted out, is that when we create V1, it's going to have some of its components stored on the free store, three to be exactly. We'll have a pointer. It will have space allocated for size. And it will also have space allocated for the capacity fields. Remember that again in that destructor, we went out, or sorry, in that constructor, we went out and we grabbed some sort of dynamically allocated array. When we created V2, this is going to be a bit more of a pain to draw because it's initial capacity. There's eight. We have a pointer, 
a size of four, capacity of eight. And this would point to an object out there on the free store. Let me pause and fill this in. Now, when we hit the assignment statement over here, the default behavior is going to be a member-wise copy. So in this case, the size will become two. Oops. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It was initially four. So the size in this case will become two, the capacity four, and that pointer will point to the same array that the one does. Okay, with all of this in mind, let's get into the definition of what's occurring here, which is going to be a shallow copy. In this case, V1 and V2 at the end of either initialization or assignment are both going to be sharing this dynamically allocated object. And when you think about this, in a lot of instances, that's probably not what we'd like to happen. And we'll see here that a deep copy is likely going to be the desired effect. 